Now I'm back from Embra, I can plow back into Poundland Delights because where I was staying, the closest pound shop was Pound World and it was closing down, unfortunately. My other favourite, uh, one that I used to visit quite regularly in Embra, used to be Nicholson Street, but it is now a Sainsbury's, which is a shame because it's simply not as good as the Poundland. Well, there you go. But Poundland has some interesting new uh, power banks. It's the uh, awesome 2,200 milliamp power Power Geek range. So that compares with their one pound ones, which uh, supposedly have 1,200 milliamp power. They often test somewhere in the region of about 800 to 1,000 milliamp. Uh, these ones uh, are two pounds and theoretically have about double the capacity. So let's open one. They've got them in fetching pink. Well, they've got most things in fetching pink, which is good. And the first thing I did when I got this one was I ran it completely flat because it did come with a charge in it uh, and then I recharged it and measured the capacity and then I ran it completely flat and measured the capacity again with a different device just to confirm that it was just 1,700 milliamp hour that the cell inside was taking which isn't quite the promised uh, capacity. Uh, not sure what sort of charge this has got on it. Do I have my little tester somewhere knocking about here? Yes, I do. Let's put this under load and monitor it and see what sort of uh, voltage it holds up. So let's find where I've just shuffled everything right this very moment. And this was a terrible thing to do because I've shuffled my little power tester. Well, that's annoying. Oh, there it is. There it is, right in front of me. So I plug this in. It's a device that does con constantly have 5 volts. Now, quite nicely, uh, even though it's got an indicator light lights up quite brightly when a load is being drawn, it still just puts out 5 volts all the time. It's one of those things that you, it's a fairly dumb power bank, and you can just plug a, a really light load into it. You could plug a small string of LED fear lights into it, and it will just run them all the time, and it runs them for a good length of time. So let's get this uh, tester, a generic, oh, eBay tester, uh, and let's crank this up. Let's zoom in so you can see what we're getting here, but not too much. So, uh, tweak this up, 200 milliamps, 360 milliamps, it's holding at 4.95 volts, 560 milliamps, 660, 720 milliamps, it's down to 4.92, which is still acceptable, 840 milliamps, 890, 970, so at just over an amp, 1.02 amps, it's dropped down to 4.92 volts. That's actually quite acceptable. Let's see what it goes to before it trips out. It's showing low voltage. It's really dropping off above that, above about 1.2 amps output. So I think that's going to be its limit. What happens if you overload it? Oh, it just cuts out completely. Okay, until the load has been uh, taken back off. Okay, that's quite acceptable. Let's open it up. So this has a joint here, and let's uh, try it, put it in here. I'm not quite sure how this is assembled. Uh, I, shall, I, I shall actually keep it zoomed into that level. Ooh, that's tied. Oh, that's promising. Oh no, it's just clipped itself back together. If I can slide this along, right, that's quite promising. Oh, it's just hinged open. I'm not sure it's supposed to hinge open. Okay, so what have we got? Here's the cell, which appears to be stuck in. How is that stuck in? Glue, presumably. I'll zoom back out here so I don't wander off shot as I'm prone to doing. Yep, there's a bit of sticky tape underneath it. Sticky foam tape to hold it in place. Right, let's take a closer look at this. So, there's a little inductor that boosts the voltage. Let's uh, zoom back in for this. Do you want to take a closer look at this? Will I take some pictures of it? Yeah, I'll take some pictures of it. And then we'll take a much closer look at it. So, taking a closer look at the circuit board, the... The circuit boards in the 1.2 ampere one and the 2.2 ampere one are very similar. They're not identical. They're using the same chip, the MP3401A, which is a very standard uh, lithium power bank chip. 
And it's quite good because it's the more modern type that once the voltage goes down below a certain level, it will actually cut off. It won't actually allow the output to draw current directly from the battery via the inductor like some of the earlier ones did. Uh, taking a look at the circuit board, on one side, we, the only components we've got are a capacitor between the positive and the negative of the output port, just for smoothing, uh, and also and uh, stability. Under here, we've also got a couple of LEDs hidden under the connector that fire out through these two ports in the front via a little clear light pipe here that guides that light out. Bit sort of haphazard, though. It's a bit strange they've done it that way. Um, when you compare the two circuit boards, so here's the uh, other unit, and you see it uses the same chip. It's notable that this one's got very clear text, and this one's kind of laser etched, I guess. I wonder if they come from the same manufacturer, one's a copy. There were problems with some of the earliest power supplies with uh, these chips going a bit nuclear in them. That's, but they're clearly from different sources, because even the pin 1 identifier, the little circle there, is different. But they are more or less identical. On the other side, the main difference is that uh, this one has the LEDs mounted here. And the reason for that is that they fire up this sort of crude box, this light box, to actually create a dot of light on top. This one, incidentally, measured out at 944 milliampere, which is quite good for these. It's also worth mentioning, if you get one of the wee cheapo ones, they often come completely flat for some reason. I don't know if it's how long they've been stored or whatever, but uh, if you plug it in and it doesn't seem to be taking a charge at all, have patience, uh, because initially, if the voltage goes too low, the chips in these will try and charge the... They'll try and recover the cell by trickling it with a very, very low current until it reaches the about 3 volts, and then they'll switch into full current. So it's worth, you know, doing that. It's worth leaving it for a while to see if it does recover. The main differences, I'm looking for places I can put this paperwork, there we go. Uh, the main differences here, there is only one real significant difference. Uh, across the input port, they've got a capacitor on the cheap one. On the more expensive one, with one with a bigger cell, they've actually got a 1 ohm resistor and series of that capacitor, which is the recommended actual component layout. All the other components are more or less ticking the box. Notable things are the 0.5 ohm resistor, uh, in series of capacitor, and the same again here. Let me bring in the schematic here. Uh, they are across the inductor, and it's designed to actually just protect the circuitry from uh, the spikes from the switching of this. You've got the the bit I was mentioning earlier on the one ohm resistor in series of one microfarad capacitor. All the cheaper one has is it's just skipped that one ohm resistor, and it's straight ac across the capacitor. That's just filtering. Uh, the outputs, everything seems to be intact. It's got the output capacitors. Um, it's made an effort to keep the P ground and ground separate. Now, the reason they have two separate grounds on this chip is that the circuitry inside it has the ground for all the rest of the circuitry, and then it's got a dedicated ground for the bit that's actually the power ground where it, a lot of current's flowing because that's the main sort of MOSFET that's uh, switching the inductron off. And the reason they keep the ground separate is because that will be subject to quite high current spikes and because of drops across the circuitry on the actual integrated circuit itself and the wire link leading to the actual pin of the chip, uh, it's better to keep them separate because it can cause uh, oscillations, it can cause uh, sort of voltage transients in that ground, which if it was on this ground would uh, affect the rest of the circuitry, it would be misreading, it would be getting a sort of false input from that sort of, uh, that its reference level. So they're kept separate, but they are connected together on the actual uh, circuitry. So there'll be a main ground bus, but it's, they're just basically keeping the power ground separate. They're keeping it close to the battery to try and uh, avoid that interference. The two LEDs out here, uh, let's see what they've done here. In the one, the posh one, they've got the tracks going through here. They've got them going through in a similar place. Um, on the cheaper one, they do have a couple of positions that may be for LEDs in roughly the same place. They've really covered everything, but they've actually put the LEDs at the back here 
instead they've obviously just left their options open. Any other things worthy of note? Yes, there are some really significant things worthy of note here. Uh, this zero ohm link and this zero ohm link. This area of circuitry that is not populated is battery protection circuitry and they've left it off to save money. Um, the, if it had been intact, there'd been a dual MOSFET here and a DW01 here and I've checked the component uh, layout and the components that are markings and they are what would have that what indicates this is a DW01. You've got a, a plated through hole going through underneath the chip and when you look at the other side of the board on both instances, that is leading to another component position. That is the current sense resistor that's designed to detect when you've got a situation where there's a, an overload, where you've basically shorted the cell out. This also has that protection in it, this chip here, for when it's under uh, high load. Uh, but that is the that resistor in the back is for the overcurrent protection, and these other ones are basically a very simple resistor and capacitive filter for monitoring the battery voltage. And what they do is they just basically stabilise it so if there's any glitches or transients, particularly during the switching, it smooths that out so this can get an accurate voltage reference. But they've left that off. If they'd put it on, it would have been nice. It would have given that little bit of protection. It would have been a second layer of protection for overcharging and also definitely a, a layer of protection that when the voltage went down too low, uh, although this chip does cut off, that would then isolate this chip completely because in some of these, they, there's been a fair little bit of quiescent current. I'm not sure how much of that is down to the chip and how much it is down to the use of these capacitors. These are high-value ceramic capacitors and as time has gone on, the values of these capacitors has gone up higher and higher in such a small space. These, Some of these are supposedly rated 10 microfarad. And that means that the layers of ceramic and the conductive layers are really so thin that they're getting to the point that they're becoming quite fragile and if they get damaged, you can get leakage in them. They can short out and if they get damp, they can also, they can create, they can act as a resistor and that is also going to be a factor in if they're faulty and actually pulling the battery voltage down quite quickly. They've got the 1.5 uh, micro Henry inductor uh, really, they've, it's just a textbook example here. Um, it's quite neat little circuits. Um, and quite nicely made as well on the circuit board. The Another thing that's worth noting, the 1.2 amp hour one is actually marked 1,200 milliamp hour. The other one is marked 8.14 watt hour, which does equate to the 2,200 milliamp hour. But either way, these cells... Uh, are not quite matching the rating. Uh, this one was just under the one amp hour, and this one was 1.7 for the 2.2 amp hour, which is a, a, it just means they're using maybe lesser cells, just because it's they're trying to make these things down to a budget. They're still perfectly usable. Other things that are interesting to note, uh, when you charge with these circuits, they have, see how this bit's marked linear charge? What that means is it acts like a variable resistor effectively. It's a current regulator that when you charge this uh, lithium cell it, by plugging the micro USB lead in, it limits the current by dissipating as heat from the chip and it does self-regulate uh, but thermally if it gets too hot. So uh, that can sort of, if, you, if it starts charging at, say, one amp and then it cuts down to a lower current, it's just because it's self-regulating this chip. It's quite a complex little thing. It's, uh, it's quite smart. So they're actually, you know, it's, it's a step up. For your extra pound, you're not getting double the capacity, but you are getting a fairly neat little unit uh, that does have that higher capacity. And it is, in a way, it's more stylish. Uh, the circuitry could be... You know, the circuitry is the same. I don't know, would this actually fit in here if I put it in? Is it completely compatible? Am I putting the right one in here? Uh, these tend to be quite fumbly to get in. I think that might well fit in there, although it's not really intended to go into this particular one. It does look like it fits in. Uh, one moment, I'm just going to pause momentarily to save you the, the horror of me fumbling this for ages. Nope, that would have been a lot of fumbling. The circuit board on the larger unit is just that tiny bit wider, which just means it doesn't quite fit in. But um, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, it's uh, it's a good upgrade. It's quite an interesting little charger. I had this running some uh, a string of lights for about two days because uh, they were quite low current lights. and. Uh, 
a nice thing about these chips is they don't do that thing that some of the clever ones do that they occasionally they, they come in the input and output connector and they sort of every so often they turn the output off just to see to measure the output voltage and see if uh, whatever is charging or discharging has, has changed in some way and what that happens if you plug in a string of lights into it or a, a low load it just dips it very briefly on a regular basis this doesn't do that this just puts out 5 volts solidly all the time so it's quite good in that regard so yeah a definite worthy upgrade